Welcome to part 17 of Model Engineering for Beginners. I would assume that many people watching this tutorial may have recently bought a lathe. When I bought my first lathe many years ago, I spent an awful lot of time just reducing pieces of metal to swarf to sort of get the idea of speeds and feeds, and in those days, tool angles. But now, of course, most of the tools are carbide tipped, and the tool angle is correct and it's built into the tool itself. Personally, I learn an awful lot by just experimenting and doing it. And what I'm doing at the moment, just to show how it's done, is I'm using an old piece of steel that I found in my scrap box, and I'm reducing it to next to nothing. And you soon get the feel for how much pressure to put on the tool, and how fast you should be running the machine. And this of course varies from machine to machine. This is quite a heavy duty lathe, it's not a massive centre height, but it's very wide, and it's very robust, so I can take big cuts. If you have a very small lathe, you've got to wind back a little bit and you can't take quite so violent a cut as this. Many years ago, the first lathe that I ever bought was called an Emco Unimat 3, and it was a great little machine. Very, very small. And I can remember turning a couple of stub axles for a friend of mine's trailer and going through about three drive belts. Those were the days. I got to a stage, though, when I had the lathe and I could figure out more or less what I needed to do, and I wanted to make something, and I thought, what can I make? I think I made a tailstock die holder, but it's a bit of a waste of time making one of those now, because you can buy them so very cheaply. What I'm making at the moment is a guide for a tap, to make it easier to centralise the tap when cutting threads in pieces of metal. It's very important to make sure that when you're tapping a hole in a piece of metal, that the tap goes into the hole in the piece of metal, exactly square. For instance, if the tap goes into the hole at a bit of an angle, things are going to get worse the further the tap gets down the hole. And often the tap will break when it gets nearly to the end of the job. So what I'm doing is making a tap guide. And as you can see, I'm turning a very simple piece of metal here. The middle part of this piece of bar, I've turned down to half an inch in diameter. And using a centre drill in the lathe, I've just drilled a centre in the piece of bar. And on screen at the moment, you can see that I've fitted a twist drill in the chuck in the tailstock. And this is one imperial size higher than a quarter, because I'm making a guide for a quarter tap. So I don't want it to be exactly a quarter of an inch. The tap does not want to be tight in the hole. So I'm just using one drill size above that which means it's going to be a bit of a rattle fit, but it's more than adequate to keep the tap in line with the work at all times. This tool I've just put in the tool post is called a knurling tool, and it starts with a K. There are different types of knurling tools. The one on the left is the one I use most of the time, and this other one is one that you can clamp onto a piece of metal and put less stress on it. To successfully use the tool on the left, you do have to apply quite a bit of side pressure but for a thin piece of metal, you'd be better with the other one, where you can just clamp it between the two cutting wheels. And you may have just noticed, I stopped the lathe and readjusted the height of this tool, because it's very important that both of the wheels cut, not just one. How many passes you make is up to you. The more passes you make, the more pressure you can apply, and the deeper the knurl. But don't try and put a ridiculous amount of pressure on, because that will stress everything out including the piece of metal you're trying to knurl. You definitely do not want the metal to be knurled all the way to its edge. It's important always to clean up the very end part so that the knurl isn't sharp. And I'm just touching it with a file to make doubly certain that it's not sharp. Model engineering rapidly ceases to be fun if every time you use one of the fittings that you've made yourself, you cut your fingers. And also, filing in the lathe is not recommended for beginners. I really shouldn't do this, but it's instinctive. And looking at the playback on the video, it occurs to me it would have been a really good idea to have tightened the parting tool fully in the tool post before I started. Anyway, not to worry, it's parted off okay. Often in a home workshop, the parted off surface can be a little bit rough. So if this is the case, it's a simple job to fit a knife tool in the tool post and clean up by taking a facing cut. This part of the clip shows me using a 5 16 diameter twist drill to slightly counterbore the hole. And it's important to do this because the tap guide may be sitting over a burr on the work that you're tapping, and the burr would cause the tap guide to lift and become inaccurate. 
Once again, it's always a good idea to use a tool like this to remove the square edge. Any edge at 90 degrees is razor sharp. So there we have it, a tap guide. A very simple little tool and very useful. And this is how you use it. Here's a 7 seconds of an inch hole drilled in a piece of brass plate. And as you can see, the burr on the underside is much greater than the one on the top, but there's still a burr on the top. By holding the tap guide firmly against the work, this keeps the tap at 90 degrees to the work and you get a very clean thread and more importantly, it's not at an angle. So whenever you screw anything into the hole, it's perfectly vertical. For the newcomer to model engineering, these are very useful things to have in your workshop. It's a good idea to make one for every tap size that you have. I have quarter and five sixteenths. I did have one that was three eighths, but I lost that. So I may just make another one of those. How to make a tap guide. Thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful.